right, guys. Welcome to another episode of Semi-Pro. I'm Coach Casey with my co-host, Damo. Damo, what's going on? Not a whole lot, man. What's happening? Uh, you know, it's a beautiful Saturday. It's like the first time in feels like three or four weeks it hasn't rained. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sun shining. By the time our listeners hear this podcast, it's actually going to be like four weeks from now. So let's try to predict something in four weeks from now. All right, so, uh, so current events, the Bears just got their ass kicked by Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Rogers we're going just through for 300, man. <laughs> so we're going with no matter how good the Chicago Bears are and how bad the Packers are, Aaron Rodgers is just going to win anyway. It's just nature yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah, Shane Jones is somewhere smiling in the if world. It's a, if it's a primetime game, then yeah, the Bears are definitely going to blow it because yep. they always <laughs> do. Yeah, so Damo and I are both huge Chicago Bears fans and a couple of our friends and, and, you know, friends of the podcast are huge Packers fans, so they'll definitely be giving it to us because I agree with you. Even though I'm a huge Bears homer, they just don't play Aaron Rodgers well. No, know? especially, I mean, like I said earlier, man, first game of the season, prime time, Thursday night game. It, it just, it's a given that Let's Aaron's go back get us. to a year ago when they had the prime time opener against the Packers. The reason why they were running away with that game is because they took Aaron Rodgers out of the yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought for sure, I remember posting on Facebook that the game was over in the first quarter when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. And I was like, this game's over. We won this, baby. When Khalil Mack scored, I yeah. was, I was yeah, through was, the roof. Yeah, At that point, no one could talk to me about football. Yeah, <laughs> it was like 21 to... Super Bowl champs. Yeah. <laughs> first was, quarter, we're Super Bowl champs. At that point, it was like 21 to nothing. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers was out of the game. And then halftime happens. Aaron Rodgers comes back into the game. He and also I, pops up at halftime. Did you see his interview after yeah, the game? Yeah, yeah. He was definitely on Molly or something <laughs> like that because his eyes were all glazed over and his pupils were huge. But when Aaron Rodgers came back in after halftime, I remember even going like, oh, no, <laughs> he's back. No, this is not good. And then, of course, he led the team to 24 unanswered points. Yeah. And they won the game twenty four to twenty one. It's still I can still see Randall Cobb running right up the middle of the field. Yeah. Eighty yards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause then running around I mean, I can't stand Aaron Rodgers, but we, we gotta give him a little bit of credit here. He ran around on one leg mm. and once he came back into the game, you could even see it in our own defense. The defense was just what do we do now, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers back in the game. We basically just gave him a pass and said, he's going to win. He's going to win the game. Yeah. Like, well, we, we, we didn't get him all the way. Can't do nothing about that. It's Aaron Rodgers. What are you going to do? You know. So, yeah. So, we're saying that four weeks from now, by the time this airs, Aaron Rodgers will have defeated the Bears yet again on primetime football. But I'll tell so, you what. Here, I'll, I'll go as far as giving you a prediction. Thursday night, opening of the 2020 or was it 2019 season? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Green Bay 24, Chicago 21. So the score last year, yeah. like 24 21, first game of the season. Okay. Yeah. But I give that uh, Green Bay dominates the game, Chicago comes back late. So okay. it's not as close and as And they come sounds. up short. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, that sounds like Aaron Rodgers' MO. It's usually that. It's usually that the Packers are front runners and not come from behind guys. It's just Aaron Rodgers has this weird magic in him where he has all these fourth quarter Hail Marys and, mm. and comebacks. But yeah, it's week one, and that's what usually happens. The Bears fold in week one, and then they get strong midseason. So I'll agree with that. So we have a guest in the house with us. All of six seven, three hundred and thirty pounds, Mr. Lenny, Big Baby Solomon. What's up, Big Baby? It's just another day in paradise, man. You know how it is. <laughs> Damon and I were talking about you. We, you've come up a few times on the podcast, but I was definitely really excited to get you on here because you're a really entertaining dude. There's never a dull moment when you're around, and you were also a part of the kind of like that that core blood brothers group of the decepticons like one of the guys who who stuck around through thick and thin and you know made it through all the bullshit we said it a hundred times but it's like it was both the most stressful time and the most fun time in my life coaching that team yeah it was definitely a stressful time and it was it was it was always fun but i must have played what every offensive position there you go you can think of yep on the line yeah, I think I played everywhere yeah, at so, some point of the season. So when I so when I brought you onto the team, you were one of the first guys that we brought in. So you and I go back to the chaos. 
brought you in, yeah. yeah, brought you into the. This, there's going to be a lot of that. Like De- Demo's still in the dark about the hey, chaos. Honestly, we have to talk about that. Yeah, but you got involved with us because of the chaos, and I think it was because there were a couple of other linemen from the pirates that came on board, wanted to play for us, and Eris Rusus. No, it's Martine. Um, oh, the <laughs> slim. skinny slim. slim. There yeah. You go, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Arena Football Champion Quarterback, yeah, Slim, yeah, that, be yeah. Day. with the ring, yeah, the ring that he had made. Wait, yeah. did he not win? Okay, he couldn't play for a lick for nothing, and he made his own ring, probably. <laughs> so a few, <laughs> all right. So Lenny uncorked it. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. A few weeks ago on the podcast, we we actually brought up the. I called him the quarterback who shall remain nameless uh-huh. because he entered the quarterback competition with Josh and Shane with the chaos. And originally Shane was Josh's quarterback and Josh was the receiver. Shane was the QB real quick. After Josh said he wanted to play quarterback, we realized real early on that Josh was better than Shane. Cause he just, he could do a lot of things that Shane couldn't do. And Shane had a lot of, of mechanical issues that Josh didn't have. Josh was just a natural athlete. So when we decided to pull that trigger, we said, well, look, we don't have any receivers, so you're going to play receiver because you guys have a natural chemistry together. And it became this weird con- – oh, there was no controversy, but the owners of that team, you need to play you know, Slim. Like Slim needs to you know, get some looks at quarterback. And the day that I said, okay, let, we'll give him a shot at quarterback. Let's see what happens. They each took a rep. Josh took a snap, threw it down the field. Shane took a snap, threw it down the field. Slim took a snap, took two steps, and threw the ball right into the ground. Wow. And, I, and wow. then I said, you know why he didn't get a shot? That's why. <laughs> you know, <laughs> competition over. <laughs> that was so, a pussy moment. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Moment there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, why don't you let me court, play quarterback? Oh, you know why, Brucey? Here you go. That's why, because you suck. <laughs> I, I should have ate that popcorn. Yeah, that was that was it. But the funny thing was, Slim had all of these really good players that were like his friends. They were in the camp, the, his camp. You know, Damo's having some technical difficulties over here. Do you I think know. we can get this shit together here, buddy? <laughs> it tightens up here. So what are you trying to do? So we were talking about Slim recruiting you to the team. So Slim recruited you. He actually recruited some pretty good players. But I don't know what it was. the The story that we were telling Damo was that he told everybody that he was a arena championship winning player for the the tampa bay storm and he had a championship ring to prove it the storm yeah the tampa that, bay storm yeah. you know the one of the greatest yeah, arena yeah, football teams of all time. they that had way. like in the 90s and early 2000s and stuff they had like six championships they yeah. had six arena bowls he won one of them in 2003 supposedly i just happened to have season tickets to the Tampa Bay Storm in 2003. <laughs> and I was like, I don't remember any Jesse Martin on that team. It turned out that uh, he wasn't on the team, of course. We, we went back and, like, Googled the roster. And he wasn't a quarterback on the team. But he said he was a backup quarterback on the team and that he won a championship in 2003 when they won the Arena Bowl, and he had a championship ring made. Wow. That's how committed to his character this guy was. Wow. <laughs> so... <laughs> Hey man, you got to fake it till you he make had, it. He had, he had you. He had, he tried to get Tech Cliff to come to the team, but you know, of course, he was involved with the Patriots, and since they already had a rock solid program going, why would he mess with that for an upstart? But there were some really talented guys that he brought over to the team, and I, yeah, for some reason, I was thinking Eris Russos got you involved, but he might have actually gotten involved because of you. So yeah, I was. I'm finding Eris is cool. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, I mean. Me and him weren't like, uh, I wasn't trying to recruit him. He wasn't trying to recruit me. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. so that's where you and I met. You came onto the team as a, I think, a right tackle. No, I tried to be centered. I, oh. mean, I couldn't snap for nothing, so <laughs> I think you told me how to move, move a tackle. Play yeah. there. Well, you're, that's got to be hard, you're in, six, nine center. Yeah, well, you know, the funny thing is I originally had the idea because of Levi, because he, Levi was a 6'8 tackle, but he was a much better center than he was at tackle. And the difference between him and – a lot of other big guys is even though he was six eight, he could get really low from the snapping position. So he didn't he didn't snap it and stand straight up and get in the view of the quarterback. He could stay in that squatting position and do his thing, and he was a beast, you know. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's more or less my concern. You snap yeah, the height, and stand up, right? Yeah, you got yeah. Me. If you got a if you got a six seven six eight center in front of a the six two quarterback, then yeah, yeah, I can't see shit. But yeah, he would stay low 
and he was just he was a beast. So my idea was when I wanted Levi to play guard, I wanted to have this massive offensive line and have my best athletic guys actually in the middle of the line so that they could move around and help with that zone blocking scheme. You are a natural right tackle. And we figured that out over time, basically probably like two years, right? Because then you came to the to the Decepticons. Fast forward two years, because it took two years from, from the time that the chaos thing happened to when the Decepticons started kind of materializing. But you were one of the first 10 guys that came out. I got you real early. You were really dedicated. You came to all those 105-degree practices out there in Holiday Rec Center when you were one of maybe two linemen. And you guys were, like, always trying to get work against each other while we were doing, like, the passing game and all that the stuff. The life and of a semi-pro lineman. Yeah, exactly. man, it's, it's tough because – you know, you don't you don't really fill out your line until a week before the season yeah. starts. And Game Lenny day. and Lenny was with us for almost that entire. You know, we've talked about it before, but it basically took eighteen months from the time that Josh and and some of the originals started practicing with me with the Decepticons to when we had that first preseason game against the the Soldiers. So it was a long time coming, and. I think when you came out, I wanted you either at left tackle or center again, something like that. We ended up settling in at right tackle as the season progressed with the Decepticons, and you had a great kick step as a right tackle. But you were a natural running, like what they would call a mauler of an offensive lineman, like you were a great run blocker as a lineman. You mauled everybody that got in your path. I mean, that's offensive line though in general. Yeah, I mean, we all hate, especially any offensive ones, they're going to yeah. tell you the same thing, that they hate pass blocking. Pass yeah. blocking. We'd rather yeah. just go there and punch someone in the mouth yeah. playing football. Yeah, I know. And, and when you have, so <laughs> with, let's, let's talk about what we could have had at offensive line for a second because you were, you were probably the first offensive lineman we actually had on the team. Then, then things started falling into place. Remember when we got Dunderdale? Dunderdale brought Jeremy Yankowski to the team. Does he listen to the show? John, yeah. Okay, because he's still the second best lineman I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so Dunderdale comes out, and that's when I actually decided I wanted to move you away from right tackle because Dunderdale was even bigger than you. And I was like, oh, I want, I want you know, him at right tackle. I want you at, at, at guard. But you, you were definitely more natural right tackle. But I was trying to fill out a massive physically massive line this is what could have been we could have had dunderdale you levi would have been the center jeremy yankowski would have been our left guard and then steve hoshak at left tackle that would have been an absolutely not just physically imposing offensive line but that would have been the best offensive line we could have possibly hoped for absolutely we, uh, we would have we would have uh, the average height with that would have been six five because the, the shortest guy on, on the line would have been Yankowski, and he was 6'4", and the rest of you guys were 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and 6'8". <laughs> so, so. That's your captains going out for the coin toss, just 6'9", mm-hmm. across yeah. the board. And if, if that had happened, if, if I had had that line, because I did right up until the first game try to talk Levi out of retirement to come and play center for us, if that would have happened, we would have just – Alabama to everybody. Mm, I would have right, just run sure. the ball ninety fucking times if, if if that's what it took to, to sure. you know win a game. We would have just run straight downhill on everybody and just let uh, you know the average size of six five, three hundred and twenty pounds just destroy everybody and kind of just bulldoze their way down the field. You know, even when I showed up, man, I was maybe half a year into it. Yeah, you had Lenny. Yeah. Steve, yeah. Dunderdale. Yeah. We ended up. We didn't have Levi because yeah. I don't think I actually Mur- met. By that time, Murtada Mur- kind of settled in yeah. at center. Yeah. We had Murtada and Nick Morris. Mur- I don't know the last name, but Nick. Yeah. Another big guy. Big Nick. Yeah. I can show that the line was big as hell. I think it was yeah. the biggest line I had even yeah. been around. Yeah, but it, it wasn't as athletic as, as I wanted it to be because, n- you know, Nick barely moved. He yeah. basically stood straight up at, at the snap of a ball. And then, you know, Dunderdale was, was limited. Uh, Dunderdale had a hell of a reach. Yeah, uh, but but, injuries and but, age. But <laughs> by, the time, by the time he'd played, and see, I didn't even know until like months and months later that he'd had that back injury coming out of high school and stuff when he was going to college. Yeah. Um, so he was basically already shot at that point, and he was just trying to like do Florida us a solid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he tried to play. But if that had worked out and Yankowski hadn't left, because Jeremy basically got a job out of state and, and left real early on, 
But if that was our line, man, we would have been unstoppable. Even with what we had, we would have been a lot better off. But as you know, because you were there, we talked about this on a couple of different episodes, the revolving door that we had at offensive line, because you were there for every game except for the Tallahassee game. And the reason why you missed the Tallahassee game was because of the bus debacle with Chris. I think so, yeah. That was... we, you, were, you guys were all supposed to catch a van, and 12 guys didn't make it to the game because they were supposed to be on that van with Chris. Yeah, I went to the playoff game that we had. But I yeah, yeah, the... you missed the Tallahassee game. Yeah. We never had the same five linemen in any two games all season. I, I 100% agree. We literally yeah. had, I think I, I played, like, literally I played right tackle one game. Yeah. I played left tackle one other. Yeah. A couple times you had to play center. Yeah, a yeah. couple times you ended up having to play center, which, like, as you said, you're not the best snapper in the world. It was not an ideal situation for us. But we, we went from week one, we had you at, at guard. We had Dunderdale at right tackle. We had Neil at guard. We had Kent at center and Steve Hoshak at left tackle. Fast forward to the next week, we got, like, Murtada snapping. We got Neil at guard. We got you at guard. We got Dunderdale at right tackle. We got – okay. So we had the craziest revolving door. I mean, I could literally list every – Nick. Nick was one of the other – because he Nick came in and played center for game two. And then we just had this ridiculous revolving door where we never had the same starting five linemen in the same spots for any two games all season. And that is why we lost games. Yeah, I mean, right there. if you want to just to nail, to bring, to bring that home, the playoff game, there was a, a series or two that starting receivers playing right tackle. Yeah, you, you were playing right tackle. Yeah. yeah. And at that time, Lenny was snapping because we didn't have any other choice. There was nobody else to, to do it. So uh, I was also playing both ways too. I think. If I'm yeah, not yeah, I yeah. You were playing defensive tackle, and you actually made dead. some. And you actually made some really cool plays at defensive tackle too. You had like a sack in the game, and you had a big like fourth down stop where he stopped him cold on a run, and then we got the ball back. But well, we yeah, were no we, one's run blocking Lenny. Yeah, yeah. No yeah, one's we, moving we, him down. We, we were not moving wise. Yeah. yeah, I think it was goal line because we put you in on goal line defensive tackle, and then you just like stuffed him, and we got the ball back at like the two yard line, which is the worst place for an offense with a struggling offensive line to be is starting yeah. at the two yard their own two yard line. Yeah, I mean we, we just had we had such a revolving door at offensive line and that's the difference between winning and losing because as much as we talk about Josh's struggles at quarterback, at least half of that is on the fact that he had no protection. Yeah, for you sure. Know, the fact that he was running at the snap on every play to get away from defenders. If he had had time to set his feet, he would have been a much better quarterback. Okay, you've got high snaps, you've got as soon as he gets the ball, there's someone in his lap. You've got yeah. botched handoffs. I mean, yeah. that was just a yeah. lot going or, on. Or Neil was, when Neil stepped in at center, Neil was snapping the ball like to the right. Yeah. So Josh was having to reach out for every snap. Yeah, he's one handing snaps above his head. Yeah. 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 Let's rewind. How old were you when you started watching football? Watching football? Yeah. By birth. I, I mean, <laughs> to be honest with you, like, I literally, yeah, did I, mean, you, I was really young. Did you come out with an Eagles beanie on? I, I literally, I, if I'm not mistaken, my mom will probably kill me for seeing this. My grandfather bought me an Eagles helmet when I was born. So, uh, uh, so I know a lot of. and Eagles. <laughs> D- D- Damo and I both know a lot of Eagles fans, but you are probably the most diehard Eagles fan I know. I bet I am. Yeah. I, I bleed <laughs> green, dude. I bleed yeah, green. I, I'd say probably. I know maybe two or three legit Eagles fans. The rest of them say are, are all on the hype train. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, like he's physically been to the vet. He's yeah. been to the stadium. He's seen games, yeah. you know. Okay, so we've established you were watching the Eagles on the tube when you came out of the womb. <laughs> when did you first strap up, and when did you start playing football? So I wanted to start with um, peewee football, basically, yeah. but unfortunately, as you can tell, I'm a little bit too big for that. Yeah, so, yeah there was actually a size limit, and you were – you were bigger than the size of yeah. that kind of weight. Sorry, yeah, right. it wasn't happening. So, right. unfortunately, with high school, I got to actually start, and I was terrible at it because I had two left feet. And I, th- I think I, I, I think I said this when I introduced you, but you are literally all of six, seven, three hundred thirty pounds right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I'm playing, and, you, I, and you've lost weight. Yeah, I was <laughs> so, six sixty, I think, or yeah. three sixty. I'm sorry, six sixty. Yeah. Holy smoke! Yeah. No, that would have been huge. That would have been a big lineman. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I believe when you played for the Decepticons, you're about three sixty. Yeah. yeah. So when yeah, you got into you, high school, what what did you start off at line? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, it could, well, I yeah, they're the line, not going to be like, been, hey, wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> I said we could have been like a D tackle or. I something. literally told my coach, he's like, "What do you want to play?" I'm like, "Defense line." He's like, "Yeah, I was going to tell you to play that anyway." So yeah. strap up and get out there, you know. Yeah. 
So you started on the defensive side or the offensive side? Um, practice wise, I started both ways. I started playing. Uh, yeah. Started out as a tackle. I always wanted to play the offensive tackle. Yeah. Um, actually, the reason why I wore number sixty nine is because of John Runyon. Right. Yeah. I remember you were a huge John Runyon fan. Yeah, yeah. I love John yeah. Runyon. He was that, that yeah. gritty kind of guy. That's what I yeah. loved about him. Um, the battles between him and Michael Strahan. Yeah, exactly. And that's, <laughs> yeah. Everybody yeah. said, "Oh, you wore sixty nine because of." You know the other implications. No, no, no it has nothing yeah, it could, to do with John that at Manning, all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember you told me that years ago because yeah, I think I asked you why you wore the number sixty nine. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, that's and I went to defensive tackle, offensive tackle, and um, in high school, and I played more of defensive side. Yeah, and then when I got to semi pro, was more when I got to realize I couldn't move as fast as everybody else, so I played more of the offensive side. So yeah. that's kind of where, yeah. Yeah, because with defensive line, it, it's one thing if you can hold a point and and you know stop momentum, but defensive linemen are really supposed to get up the field. So if you don't have that explosion to get off the ball and get you know behind the line, then you're not going to stop yardage from being gained. Yeah, you know, I think more for a defensive lineman, it's more moves. Yeah, you, know, you got to have yeah. hand moves. You got to have right. your own my signature spin move, right. SWAT, whatever it is. Right. You know, I think yeah. as as an offensive lineman, feet is the most important thing. You, yeah, yeah. Which it's funny because critics have said that you don't have the, the the quickest feet and that you weren't the best option for us at say like right tackle, for instance. But going back and watching game film, and sometimes I was really critical of your play, but I also think that. When we started the season, you were in a lot worse shape than you ended up being by the time we got, you know, midway and, and, and towards the end of the season. Because your play actually got better as the season went on, and that's not always the case with, with linemen. Typically, linemen start to fall apart as the season wears on because of all the contact and all that. But you consistently kept improving week in and week out. And there are, you know, highlights out there on the internet of of your beautiful chopping your feet at right tackle, you know, in a pass block situation, like getting out in front of a very speedy defensive end and basically creating that, you know, that wall, that pocket for Josh to step up and, you know, do something with the ball. So you ended up actually having some pretty good footwork. But early on, I think the case was you were out of shape and you weren't in the, the kind of shape to basically play, you know, 50 games, snaps a game, game or, yeah. yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, I definitely, as you said, I think when we were trying back from that Tallahassee or wherever that game was, the, the Nightmare Pensacola. game. Pensacola. Yeah, yeah, that one. You were saying you played yourself in a shape during the course of the season. And yeah. that made the most sense when you said it. I'm like, yeah, it sounds yeah. just like the way I am. But like, yeah. I start off slow and move. Yeah, yeah, because you you did. You got quicker and quicker as the season wore on, and and I do remember in that Nightmare playoff game, we keep saying Nightmare just so everybody knows, we were actually playing – the nightmare like that was the name of the team but it was also a, a nightmare, nightmare scenario game. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we had 21 guys i think against their 53 man squad all of those dudes look like for the listeners think a football roster on one sideline and a basketball roster on yeah. the other sideline yeah. yeah it reminded me of the necessary roughness remember that movie when the first game of the season, when they're standing there in their own home tunnel, like waiting to burst out and that team, it was like the Bobcats or something comes running out onto the field and you hear like Rob Snyder in the, in the booth going like, it looks like the Bobcats dressed all 87 of their players today, you know, and like they all come <laughs> running out and the, the guys on the Texas state armadillos, they got 17 dudes just standing there. They were all pumped up until they saw the size of that squad and then you could see all the wind come out of their sails and they're just standing there going, okay, you know, this isn't going to go so well for us today. <laughs> like, and that's exactly what it was, man. We're like we looked across from the field, the nightmare were, I would say overrated. And yeah. I think you can agree with that because once we stepped onto the field with them, we, we, we saw, Oh, we can definitely hang with them. We can definitely be in this game with these guys. But just like I've said before, it's a, it's a war of attrition. And when you've got, you know, 19 guys rotating in at every position against a 50 man roster where they can throw in a fresh body and their third stringer is just as good as their first stringer. It's going to catch up to you, you know, eventually. Yeah, absolutely. So where did you play your high school ball? Dixie Hollins high school, Dixie Hollins classic. Yeah. Fun, fun times. We Nothing a big lineman, just like myself, the right. whole time. It's the only thing I think we had in that school was yeah. was big, big country lineman. Yeah. And you said you basically played mostly defense in high school. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Defensive tackle majority of the time. Yeah. 
were you like a starter? Did you come out of the game a lot? Uh, I, I wasn't a starter. Like I said, my wrestling was more of my, my passion in high yeah. school. Yeah, so I want to talk about that with you because wrestling came out of you a lot in practice and sometimes in the games. And you could actually see some some of the, you know, in blocking situations and stuff, how some of your wrestling technique would actually come out of you, especially if a, uh, if a defensive lineman went low on you. You usually just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fell over on them and then, and then rolled them over and held them down and grabbed a bunch of grass between your fingers <laughs> to, to hold them down. So wrestling, I know you wrestled in high school, but, you know, let's talk about that. So obviously you were a heavyweight. Yeah, absolutely. How far back did you go with wrestling? Did you wrestle before high school? No, no, I only wrestled in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, it was more of a thing for, you know, to feel close to my family up north, kind of, basically, is why I got into it. Yeah. And more than one Wrestling's a big thing up north. Well, my, my uncle was a really good wrestler back okay. up north. Okay. So that's kind of why I did that, but... Yeah. um. More the one on one, like I'm, I'm better than you. Yeah. That's kind of that mentality. Yeah. I kind of like that. Where yeah. football was more to me, at least in high school wise, I can be better than you, yeah. but we're still gonna get our ass kicked. Yeah, I, I wrestled in high school too, and I, I loved it. And I, I actually wrestled a class above my weight because I was in the 189 weight class. But the guy who wrestled in my place, he was a year older than me, and he actually he. I learned most of my wrestling skill from him because he taught me how to wrestle. And I went to a lot of the clinics that he went to and stuff. He was kind of like my my idol, if you want to say that. But we were friends, you know. But I learned how to wrestle from him. He was basically a D1 <laughs> you know, wrestler being touted by a lot of, like, D1 schools. There was no beating him for the 189 spot. Yeah. So I wrestled up to 215, and I usually showed up to a match at 195, the only thing that I did like about that was I never had to cut weight, but then I was wrestling guys who were, you know, all of, you know, 211, 210, 215, and that's where you start getting into the, most of those guys are going to be pretty out of shape and chubby, and I loved wrestling the bigger guys because they were so much slower than me, and I could work all of my moves on them, you know, my whole move set was open to me. Heavyweight, and I don't know, you're, the one thing I noticed when we started talking about wrestling and I would see you kind of wrestling with the guys and stuff, like you actually had some skill and you, you, you knew you know, bulldogs, like, you know, I would see you bust out actual wrestling moves on guys in, 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 you know, practice. When I think of heavyweights, I think of like head slapping and wrist control and just like the heavyweights are always trying to maintain position, but they're never really, you know, working a move set or anything like that. So when you wrestled, you know, how was it for you? Did you basically, did you encounter that? Like, what kind of wrestling style did you did you use? Um, our coach really put more towards the, the, the lower weight classes. So yeah. even though I was a heavyweight, yeah, we worked on pummeling into a bear hug and stuff like that yeah. usually. Or the, the, we call it a cow catcher, which is the right. head and the underarm. Right. But we almost, as a heavier weight classes, almost learned to wrestle more like the lower weight classes due to the fact that, he spent so much stuff, energy putting into those lower weight classes. So you were actually shooting doubles and stuff? Absolutely. The really? outside double, yeah. That's like unheard of from a heavyweight. <laughs> Heavyweights do not shoot doubles. And that's why it's usually effective because they, <laughs> yeah. they never, they never see it coming. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I used to have to wrestle in practice. They made me wrestle the, the heavyweight guy. His name was Mark Duncan. We just called him Dunk. He was a good, you know, almost 100 pounds heavier than me because he was like, you know, what's the limit, 265? 275. Right, and he was all of 275. He was also our starting left tackle in, in football. <laughs> and coach used to always go, all right, Dunk needs a partner. Who's going who's gonna to wrestle with them? And no one would ever volunteer. And finally, they just picked me, and they'd be like, Casey, you wrestle with Dunk. And I'd be, but I, why? Why do I have to wrestle with him? Because he would just lay on me, you know, and, like, just use all of his weight. And I, I hated it. But – I was able to take him down with several single and double legs. And one time I thought I broke my arm because I doubled on him so well that he, he fell to the ground like a sack of shit. And when I when I doubled him, all of his weight fell on my arm. <laughs> and I thought I broke my wrist because he fell on top of me. I ended up being okay. But, yeah, the big guys do not see, you know, leg takedowns coming. And they don't know how to sprawl and defend it because it never comes. So It rarely ever does. Yeah. Usually it, it's the... The lower it's weight all, classes yeah, that, like you yeah, were saying, that, yeah. that do that kind of stuff. Like people who are at that 230 to 215 yeah. of the weight class. Yeah. Heavyweights are always head slaps and trying to like head work and stuff. They're trying to get you into that position for a head and arm or a bulldog or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So you threw some double legs on guys. Absolutely. Yeah. It was it would, and Probably got sprawling a couple of times too, you know. Yeah. All that weight dropped on, on the back of my head too. But yeah. 
Yep. Do you remember roughly like how many matches you won? Um, my freshman year, I didn't win a match at all. I was in JV. My sophomore year, I went to the regional tournament and brought the guy who won sixth in state to his absolute limit. Like he literally busted his ass to try and work on, you know, huh? yeah. try and beat me. So he did beat me. Don't get me wrong. You remember what school that was? Um, Tarpon. Okay, yeah, Tarpon had a good wrestling program, yeah. And they had a great heavyweight back in 02. Yeah, yeah. so that I wrestled from 98 to 02, and Tarpon had a good couple, 215, two, like their heavier guys were were good wrestlers. Countryside obviously always had, you know, the best wrestling Denver program. Brandon, yeah. Our wrestling program at Palm Harbor was actually based on the Countryside wrestling program because June came from Countryside. So he brought, like, Coach Davis's, you know, wrestling program over to Palm Harbor. So in 98, we were district champions. My, our coach was one of those coaches, like, if you bitched out, you know, like, oh, you've got a headache, you know. Yeah. I've got a headache, and it's from watching you play, you know, <laughs> like yeah, stuff like that. I had a sprained wrist. Like, I looked at my coach like, hey, yeah. coach, this is not supposed to be this way. Yeah. Get out there and do another round. Like, yeah, we we had a we had a fullback who dislocated his finger, and when he came off, he was like holding his hand like this, and his finger was you know pointed out to the side and stuff. And the coach was like, "Relocate it and get back out there." <laughs> Relocate. <laughs> he was one of the he was one of the best players on the team, so, so he did. He just grabbed his hand and pulled his two fingers together and pulled as hard as he could, put his finger back in, and went back out there. They That's won't let you do that anymore. It's it, it's funny because I'm thinking about when I coached the Decepticons and stuff like all the all the times guys would come off the field for absolutely no reason and stuff and it's like <laughs> I would I would lay into somebody with that 98 99 mentality you know of uh, you know, trust me I know I have plenty of uh, things and bruises from yeah. playing the Decepticons. <laughs> And literally had to go out there three plays later to yeah. get back on the yeah. Lenny, are you good? Are you? That's what I used to say to you all the time. Like, you'd be on the bench. Are you ready, Lenny? Are you ready to go back out there? Are you ready? Look who's in your spot, Lenny. Go get that spot, you know? It's a totally different generation. We were talking about that with the Ronnie Lott thing. But yeah. guys today, like, you know, they, they stub their toe or they or they scratch their elbow and they come out of the game because they need to get it looked at. And it's like back in the day, you'd have us getting, like, full-on, you know, stage three concussions and then being told to go back out there while we're throwing up. And, and you know, one time I got hit so hard that my eyes actually went back into my skull. I like, had that happen. I was staring into my skull when I got hit. And my coach said, Oh, you got a headache. You got a headache, you know? And, and I, I literally, like, threw up on the sidelines and put me back in the game. So. Yeah, I, uh, when my freshman year, I was all of maybe 5'3", five, 5'4", five, maybe 130 pounds. And my brother at the time was uh, going into his junior year, sophomore year, uh, led the city of Chicago in running back uh, um, for touchdowns. Yeah. I think in the 10-game season, he had 16 touchdowns uh, as a sophomore, and he wasn't starting. Uh, so he was this big name running back, and they said, "You know what? You're a little Paris because this was named Paris. You're a little Paris. Go play running back." So I'm playing running back. They're like, "Okay, you can't do that. You're too small. Go play defense on varsity." So and I'm, I'm on defense. Yeah. My brother's a running back. Yeah. He's in the open field. I'm at safety, and I see him coming at me. My first thought is, "Fuck, bite his shoes. I'm going straight to the ground." <laughs> so I dive down for his ankles, and I caught all of either knee or calf or whatever it was, and he hit me, and I know I. My eyes rolled back. When I came back, everything was lime green. When I say lime green, I'm talking jerseys, people, everything yeah, yeah, lime yeah, green. Yeah, it's you got <laughs> you got you got hit so hard you became a malfunctioning yeah. VHS. Like. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, and I, uh, I tell him like, dude, you gave me a concussion, 100. He's like, yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> you went low. So, the, so for me, man, I said I was a freshman. I and, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I didn't get varsity. Off of my skill, yeah, I got it off the coattail of my brother. Right, right. You know, right. I, 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 don't get me wrong. As a freshman, I was good, but yeah. I wasn't varsity good. You know, it's it's kind of it's funny to hear that coming from you too, because like you're a phenomenal football player now. So I'll be like, honest you with know, you. Like, yeah. the fact that you weren't just born into it is actually kind of refreshing to know that you had to you had to learn and get better and 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 Absolutely. hone your craft and stuff. You know, because some. You, 
people would easily think that a guy like you with the kind of resume that you have and stuff, you just woke up and showed up and did it, you know? And, and you know, and it's, it's funny because, you know, even off air, we talk, I told you about my wife and having yeah. to prove to her that yeah. I actually am good. Yeah. So when we got together, I, I played pickup basketball. That was how I stayed in shape. I yeah. Off-season pickup basketball almost every day. Yeah. And uh, she saw me play ball. She thought I, I was a beast at basketball. And, and growing up, that was my sport. My dad was a basketball player. He never played football. So I grew up playing ball, and uh, I didn't get into football, man, until seventh grade. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. I came in late at Pee Wee, yeah. and then I jumped straight to varsity where I didn't really play because I wasn't the guy. Right. And I rode off of his coattails, and everyone Everybody's was like, oh, you're Paris's brother. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. And then once they realized it, they're like, eh, maybe we should put him on the JV. <laughs> so, but it, while I was on varsity, being the small guy, uh, we our senior linebacker, I'll never forget this, and uh, I, I – one, picking helmets back then was a huge deal. Yeah. So I, I didn't get the helmet I wanted because I was a freshman. Yeah. I wanted – this was when Revolutions came out. Yeah. So I ended up getting the, the old pro-style two-bar – Of course. Two-bar helmet. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's it's sort of the same drill. It's yeah. uh, it's the old uh, Madden-style drill. You've got the QB in the center pitching the ball to the back with yeah. one linebacker and a safety. Right. You make it happen. you right. got to get the first down. Right. And it, that's it. Just a shell. And I get the, the pitch. I'm running to the, the right side of the field. The linebacker comes. He gets me for a two-yard loss. I get up. The two bars are folded in. He hit me so fucking hard. <laughs> this guy is the senior <laughs> middle linebacker. Fucking <laughs> laid me out. He bit my middle so, face mask. So, so there's lots of stories of that happening back in the day where, where linebackers would hit running backs so hard that it would actually – cave in their face mask but that right there you know right off the bat that guy's not using proper form because he used this the top of his helmet yeah, to drill right into your face mask yeah, yeah. Fucking lay yeah. Me out. but so many guys in high school did that man like they would put their head down and i did too and that's why i had a lot of concussions because i always kind of like used my head as a weapon you know yeah. so yeah Damon over here, man, when he first started passing us i told you i said we can't let him go like that yeah. one player <laughs> yeah. we don't let go you know for yeah. the first practice, I think I saw him. I was like, yeah, we're not letting this guy We were go. talking about that in a couple of different podcasts, but let, let's get your take on this because we talked about this with Josh. We, I talked about it with Shane. That first practice where Damo and his boys showed up, we became like a totally different team, right? It definitely was a more physical practice, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. I know I was working with Javel the whole time, yeah. and uh, me and him were, were battling the whole yeah. practice. Yeah, and he to, showed he showed up that day, too, and that's when I was like, oh, my God, now we have defensive linemen, yeah, too. Yeah, I was going like, to say, to talk on that, just about JaVel, yeah. even talk, I think you said it, 12 sacks? 12 and a half, yeah. Uh, 12 and a half sacks in a five-game season. So yeah. we, we showed up with some right. ballers. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I said, like, imagine if he played the whole season, he probably could have had 20-plus sacks, yeah. you know, easy. The first play, the first play that we called, because you were actually at left tackle for this practice, the first play that we called was a tunnel screen to the left. And you jumped out in front of, of Damo, who caught the tunnel screen, and you tried to cream Jeff, but Jeff just – you kind of took Jeff out of the play because he had to go around you, which is good enough. <laughs> you know, because that's, that's what you're, you're aiming for the corner when you're the tackle over there. You took him out of the play, but Damo went 60 yards with that first tunnel screen, and that was the first play of practice. And that's when I was like – all right, like we're gonna win the championship now, you know. Because so you're saying they're the champions. Yeah, yeah. Because we just look like a totally different team from the week before when we had, you know, what we had. But I've, I've said it many times, like we had talent, but nothing like when he showed up, you know. Yeah, you Again, guys had a guy that I, I kept hearing about. He actually never played that that season. Uh, Brendan, Brendan. Something like that. Smiley. Oh yeah, Smiley, Smiley. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Smiley. Yeah, because Smiley had the game-winning touchdown against the Ballers in the preseason, and it was a beautiful arcing, you know, kind of like uh, just bomb of a pass by Josh, and and he went up in coverage and caught it and brought it down, and he. He always he was the funniest guy because he did not look like <laughs> a strong football player at all, yeah. but he was he was great. He was a really great receiver. Yeah, he ended up moving. Yeah, I know. That, that was a zero, shit zero. show. No, it was yeah. a shit show for just the, the refs and yeah. the field we were playing on. There was no lines, no anything. Yeah, and I think, right, we had to we had to use – we couldn't use our end zone on our side because it was full of fire ants or something like that. Something so they, like that. So they, they cordoned it off, and we basically – almost like what happened this weekend with the 80-yard field, the Packers yeah, and the Raiders, I, we basically played on a 90-yard field. Well, that, we were only going one direction, I think, too. Yeah, right? yeah, I we think, turned and I mean, went one, no one direction. I think, for that game. I think we were all just going to, you know – South or north or whatever direction it was. There Which was is, no 
you know, going in the direction. Which is funny because when Jeff iced that game with the pick six at the end, <laughs> he basically <laughs> he ran. The, yeah, he just ran until there was nowhere else to run. Like, <laughs> like because there was no end zone even like marked for that. Uh, um, but they did have like end line cones, so he basically just ran to the end line cone and stuck the ball over the cone and scored. Turn around, like, do scored, I give this to exactly? <laughs> yeah, but that was we we had scored uh, a touchdown with like ten seconds left, and they got the ball back to start their drive. And he got a pick six on the first play and just ran, like, just ran it all the way to the other side of the field. And that was when we all made history on the on the on the internet because Darius Smalls, you know, your mouth dropped completely. Yeah, oh, and he <laughs> Darius that guy. crushed that guy. Yeah, yeah, when Jeff was running that interception back. Um, that's what. That's one of the things that brought me out too, because Jeff was telling me about it. He's like, yeah. Yeah, we got a receiver that yeah. that can ball, so it's yeah. someone opposite of you, yeah. and we got a guy that'll lay someone out. Darius, and look at his yeah. Clip. yeah, Darius crushed him, and everybody goes no. Uh, and when you look at the picture, because that girl we were talking about the pr- photographer she took the perfect photo of our sideline and you see everyone on the sideline is going like there's a picture like with you in the bag and i'm you, doing yeah, this I think you and rock had the best best face facial expression yeah, of, yeah. Of what everybody happened. makes fun of my face because it was as if i went like this <laughs> like you could hear my lips like pull apart and my mouth was just wide open i was like oh my god but eric's in the background braithwaite he's in the background going Ooh, like this you know <laughs> <laughs> Everybody had the funniest look on their face, but uh, yeah, that was that was not a good game, not a good look at all. But then we scored two touchdowns in the final ten seconds of the game to you know to finally put it away. A but, win's a win. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they were not in our league, man. We should have crushed them. Yeah, we we definitely should have. Yes. It was terrible field conditions. You want to talk about bad field conditions because we were talking about Soldier Field and like the bad grass and the bad field. And half of the, it was just that nobody could get any traction on that, that field. You know, I would be, be honest with you, that's Florida. Yeah, coming from up north, yeah. I don't know if you've played in any of the fields up north, but in case I know you have. Yeah, it, it, for me in Chicago, it was primarily north. Uh, Most of them turf. are artificial. Yeah. yeah, yeah, turf down here is just completely the War Eagle, the Decepticon field. Yeah, yeah. great, great facility, but the yeah. field, you know, yeah, it's, it's just, just junk. It's yeah, because uh, yeah, just you got sand. I think that's the, what popped my knee. Yeah, oh, fall yeah. on the sand ditch. Yeah. You, we, Shane and I were talking about that in his episode because Shane does that. He catches that thirty yard post where if there if he hadn't stepped in that sand trap, he would have run right into the end zone. Mm-hmm. But he catches the pass, steps in the trap and just falls face first yeah, it, three feet away from the end zone. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. <laughs> it, it claims it was, ankles. That's it was right where the kicker would stand to kick the field the extra point on uh, a PAT. Yeah. So and I don't know why it always happened to be there, but they just wore a hole there every every year, you know. And that was one of the better fields, man. That yeah. was the thing. Was like that was actually a great facility. the best possible situation we could have been in because then when we would play a couple of games at Canal Park in Oldsmar, that field was trash, man. Yeah, you know, it's good. Uh, the Scorpions. I don't know if you played them when they played for uh, when I was with the Pirates. Yeah, they literally had nails and needles and yeah. all sorts of stuff throughout the ground. Look at the look at the Pirates field because they par- play on that Dunedin field. It's not even Dunedin High School. It's like the Dunedin Youth Field. Oh, yeah. But half the year, that field will go untouched by maintenance, and the grass will end up being like six feet tall so, by the time they cut it and stuff. That was like, part of my issue when I went to one of their practices, man. Yeah. The field was touching. The grass is touching my knee, yeah, and right. I can't cut. I can't run. Right. It, it, it throws me off. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about all of the the special times that, that Lenny Big Baby Solomon hit the turf. So if there was ever a need for an oxygen tank on the sideline, it yeah. would have been for the Decepticons. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. Needed, we you needed spent, to get this guy some air. You spent more time on your back. <laughs> hang on hang on we have physical proof i can pull up the game film right now of you laying on the sidelines on your back with like a knee in the air and you just are kind of like yeah, i can still see it ooh, ooh. and that's where you became famous for your you assholes better not cut me yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> you'd be laying on the ground just catching air and we'd all be talking shit about you and and I'm a lineman, so I wasn't cut anyway, but... You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was no cutting you. Like, you know, I just had to deal with the fact that you needed several minutes to get up off the ground. <laughs> but, yeah, let's talk about some of those in-game moments where you hit the turf, because 
it got to the point where all of us on the sidelines, anytime Lenny went down, you know, first of all, I would just be like, Lenny's down again, guys. Yeah. Lenny, down. <laughs> Lenny's down again. But we would kind of have like little sideline bets going on on how long it was going to take you to get up <laughs> because uh, there you were famous for what we call the Redwood Timber where when you would get hit from whichever angle was enough to, to take you down, it was a slow timber. And, and you would uh, slowly <laughs> fall to the earth. And once you hit the ground, we were like, God, it's going to take six or seven people to get him up off the ground. <laughs> I had bad knees, man. That's what it, really, what it came down to. I got hit and my knee would buckle and all of a sudden I couldn't feel anything, man. My, my had to wait to... It's funny that you were so good at wrestling because you had the worst balance in the history of linemen, I think. You, you, dude, you just, I mean, like, I don't know, you spent so, you got knocked down so many times. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even your personal one-on-one -on -one battles that I'm talking about here. Because most of the time, if we were running the ball, you would fucking maul whoever was standing across from you. It was whatever else came your way. Like, if, if somebody blindsided you and hit you from the side, or if you got run over from behind, you just... It was going to be a 10-minute delay of the game to get you off the turf. I had to catch my breath. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> For the most part, I thought it was all out of, out of breath. Exactly. Yeah. I was out of breath. I couldn't get back up. <laughs> Was what it sounded like when you. Yeah. <laughs> then I came out for one play and went right back in, you know? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes two or three plays. Sometimes two or three plays, you'd be sitting on the bench, and then I'd turn and look at you and go, Hey, Lenny, you feel like getting back out there today? Like... <laughs> There were a couple of times. I mean, I'm not yeah. going to say I was the best, but. There was one time that you actually surprised me, though, because it was in the second Tiger Sharks game where the one we won six to nothing. So that was like. That you mean fun. the one that coach decided not to get off the field? Cool. He That's why that. we won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that ended up being a hilarious uh, division rivalry, if you even want to call it that, because they beat us six to nothing, and then we beat them six to nothing. But. We got we got screwed out of two touchdowns in the game that they won uh, yeah. because their referee just literally wanted to throw a flag on anything, and he was caught saying that he was one of the refs. He, he goes, "Hey man, did they, they get anything on that?" And he's, "No, you know, no, so and so they were good." And he, "Oh man, I really wanted to throw a flag just then." Like uh, he just wanted to flag us for anything. And then in in our game at home, yeah, what happened was we scored a touchdown running nothing but Wildcat. I did it for the entire series, right down the throat, right down their fucking throat. They couldn't stop it if they if they tried. And my plan was to just basically do that the entire game because they had no answer for it, and and it was perfect against their all out up the middle blitz because that's what they did every play. And that's why we struggled the first time we played them is because we didn't have the right setup with the linemen and they were just all out blitzing, engage eight right up the middle every, <laughs> every play against us. A little Madden right there. And then, yeah, that's, 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 but that's what it was. It was just an engage eight up the middle blitz every fucking play from them. And that's why our offense struggled so bad the first time. So I said, okay, we're going to run the wildcat against this and make them choose which one they're going to go after because they're going to have to pick somebody. And Mark was perfect at distributing that ball. And it was either he handed it off to uh, Quentin or he pulled it and, and kept it for himself. And there was this one play on, I think it was like the fifth or sixth play of that drive. We went like 65 yards for a touchdown on that and running nothing but Wildcat. It pissed me off as a receiver, by the way. I know. Yeah. I, you weren't even on the field for that I drive. Was okay. either. I was in the field. Were you? Okay. Uh, Cause it was all him and Quentin. Like, yeah. Yeah. They, no. they were the ones touching the ball. <laughs> Cause especially with it being a one drive game. I'm sorry, Damo. <laughs> so, I was it's more like, interested. Can we do one pass here. I'm sorry that I was more interested in winning <laughs> than, than getting you hey, the football. Receiver, <laughs> so, it's what so, it is. Uh, there was this play, five or six plays in, where Mark kept the ball. It was actually. It was funny because it was a bad play. The The snap hit him in the hands, and when he went to – I think he wanted to hand it to Quentin, and Quentin ran into the ball, so the ball hit the ground. Mark picked it up on a bounce and took off up the right tackle, and you were you were completely engaged on this guy, and Mark went right up your ass. Like, like, like go around me, right? No, 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 right in the back. No. And, and you drove the guy. You drove the guy like six or seven yards off the ball. So by the time Mark made contact with your back, it was about seven to eight yards down the field. And he was running full speed, and he just put his shoulder into your spine and ran 
directly through you. Like, you hit the ground, Mark went over you, and Mark ended up, like, diving over you for an extra couple yards or whatever. But I remember when that happened, it was by far the nastiest hit I'd seen you take all season. And knowing what our track record was of you going down and then spending five to ten minutes letting the referees (laughs) find somebody to pick you up. I thought you were out for the game. I thought I, right then I literally said to myself like shit, I think Lenny's legitimately hurt because Mark crushed you in the spine and then ran over you and kept going and you popped right back up. Like it was the one and only time you hit the ground all season where you popped right back up because we were running a hurry up offense and it, whether you were hurt or not cuz it damn sure looked like it hurt. It was as if your adrenaline kicked in and you were like, we got to keep this momentum going because you just hopped up and ran right back to the the field. My wife was there. That was her first game. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) Got to show out. (laughs) Got to show out. My my now wife was there. So, you know, I had to make sure I I couldn't look a bitch in front of her. So (laughs) it was like it was like if you had done what you basically did the rest of the season, it would have killed the momentum of our of our no huddle drive because we were running no huddle that entire drive. And I just remember thinking like. I was looking for somebody to take your spot. And before I even got anywhere, you popped back up and got lined up again. And I was like, holy shit, Lenny's okay, everybody. Lenny's okay. (laughs) What what ended up happening that guy? Because we we finished that drive. Yeah. They went on the field. And I think maybe four or five plays in. Yeah. And then we were done. Yeah, and I was kind of worried, too, because um, the (laughs) – they had actually gained about thirty yards in in in, in the time that they were on the field. It was field. one play. Yeah, it was two, one two plays, I think. Okay, well, two yeah, plays. It was yeah. it wasn't a progression no, no, down the no. field. They just they that was too. No, and the one play was actually because one of our defenders took out the other defender. Me. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because that's yeah. why I know it was. One I think play. it was Jeff. I think Jeff was the one who ran into you because Jeff was following the the I, dude down the field or I whatever. Somebody ran into yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So what happened on that was while they were in the middle of their offensive series. It was no, no more than two or three snaps had actually been run, and he th- threw an incomplete pass one of those times. The The coach on the other side of the field was running down. First of all, he wasn't where he was supposed to be because if you remember where they started their drive at, they were at like the 10-yard line when they started they with, the, with the football. Uh, he was standing on his sideline, basically right where the line of scrimmage was, which, as you know, you box. only get 20. Yeah, there's a 25-yard box between each end zone. So he's not supposed to be standing there anyway, but he was. When that one big play that they had happened, which I'm saying big, but it was like, you know, 15, 16 yards is what they got on the play. And, again, it was because you got taken out. I actually thought that that was going to be a touchdown. And when it ended up not being, I was like, okay, we're going to be all right. But he ran down the sideline and ran directly into the referee who was standing where he was supposed to be. Yeah, okay? I remember um, now, The referee okay. was running down the sideline. All right. You're supposed to, if you're the coach or whoever, you're, if you're going to run down the sideline, you have to be inside the box. He was on the sideline, like in the white where the referee is, and he ran into the referee. And then when he ran into the referee, he got pissed about it, and he, like, shoved the referee as hard as he could. He was always my least favorite referee because he would always end up on our sideline, and he gave us more fucking sideline penalties than, yeah. than any. And he, remember, he always got into it with our players. and our players. He was, he was the ref that just, like, you couldn't talk to. No, no this, it is what it is. So <laughs> this ended up being one of those things where he, like, paid us back because he ended up being the referee on the other sideline for this game. He ran into – the coach ran into him and then shoved him. And when he shoved him, the referee was like, okay, you're gone, <laughs> and ejected him right then and there. And then they spent 25 minutes like Arguing. going over it, yeah. yeah, because he was trying to argue that he shouldn't be ejected, and the referee was simply saying, first of all, I was exactly where I was supposed to be, and you should never be in on my line where I'm, you know, need to be able to run back and forth up and down the field. You ran into me incorrectly, and then when you ran into me, you you thought it like, why are you here? And you shoved me. So I I tossed you. You put your hands on me. You can never touch an official ever, you know, other than to shake hands or slap hands with them or whatever. You can't lay your hands on a referee. So he got tossed from the game for it. 
And when he got tossed, he was told, all you have to do is go on the other side of the fence and sit in the stands right there. If you want to coach the game, that's fine. This was the referees trying to reason with this guy. They were like, look, if you want to send in the signals to the, the this guy who's, <laughs> you know, the last coach you got left on the field or whatever, you can do so. But you got to do it from over there. You can't be on the field anymore. You you've, been, that, and then, you've been tossed. And yeah. the, when the players, I, I, I remember players being on the field saying, oh, well, we'll play without our coach. Yeah, right. And yeah. this was literally a yeah. half an hour. Yeah, there was a half hour delay. Game. Yeah, there was a half hour game delay on this. And if you remember what happened was Andy, of all people. From Pirates, Andy? And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so somehow Bernard, the commissioner of the league, had Andy's number and Andy was there. I have no idea why. I still don't know to this day why Bernard called Andy instead of calling me because I'm a coach in the league. I'm, you know, like uh, Bernard and I talk every single day. Uh, I, I don't understand why he didn't just call me. But anyway, he called Andy. Andy comes walking up to me on the field where we were all standing trying to figure out what we were going to do. And he hands me a phone and he goes, hey, Bernard wants to talk to you. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like where did you come you from? Like, you and like, why is he on the field? Exactly, yeah. He said, <laughs> where did you come from and why is Bernard on your phone wanting to talk to me? This is the weirdest thing ever, right? So I get on the phone with Bernard, the commissioner of the league, and he wants to know what the hell happened. He's like, hey, what's going on down there? And I said, I, uh, we're winning uh-huh. and, and this guy's not happy about it, so he wants to bounce. And he, he says, tell me what happened. And I said, well, I wasn't there, but I can tell you what the referee said. And then I just literally handed the phone to Jamie, the, the white hat, the referee for the, the other yeah. crew. And he started telling him what happened. Hey, uh, he ran into my ref uh, doing his job, and then he shoved the ref, so the ref tossed him. And he's not getting back into the game because once you've been thrown out, you can't be let back in. And he refuses to walk around to the other side of the fence and just sit in the stands or whatever. And he does. He's like, at this point, I don't even care if he sits there, but he can't be on this side of the field. He's got to be on that side of the fence. And Bernard's like, what a shit show. And this was after everything had already happened with them and us, because by then we had our brawl with the Sharks. And then and then the Tiger Sharks had pulled all the bullshit they pulled where they'd forfeited multiple games because of stuff just like that. That guy, Antonio was his name, was just crazy. He basically pulled his team and his team did say that they would just finish the game. But because several players had come with him or something like that, he had to take them in a van. And then, you know, the team was like, okay, well, I guess this isn't going to happen. No, they went and, to scrimmage us then. I know, yeah. They went to the calls on scrimmage. I'm like, no. Yeah, and then, they for... said, and then they said, oh, well, we can just reschedule this game. And it's like, reschedule, first of all, we – We're winning. <laughs> we knew, right. And, and even though it was just six to nothing – we knew exactly because of what had happened in that first drive that we were going to run all over them and that they couldn't do anything. And I felt like it was a cop out because they knew as soon as we got the ball back, we were going to do the same shit and there was nothing they could do to stop it. So it felt like a total bullshit, you know, cop out. So we won the fucking game. We were going to win the game anyway. It would have been, you know, a 28 to nothing game if you know, if they'd scored a touchdown, whatever. But but our offense was going to annihilate them. Nothing pisses me off more as a football player to get on the field yeah. score do whatever to well, warm up and then, and then but then they think about it. i know but then think and, and our players are pissed but uh, let's let's put ourselves in their shoes for a minute like the players on that team those guys drove two hours to forfeit a game for your coach too <laughs> that's what i'm saying it wasn't even them it wasn't uh, their decision they they drove two hours to play in a game that they then lost and when they had a shot to continue playing and and decide the fate of the game their coach said no i'm a bitch and we're out of here that's basically exactly what happened yeah. but that 30 minute delay was ridiculous yeah, it was like you said a shit show andy andy walked up to me with the phone and i was just like this is literally some shit out of the twilight zone why, yeah, like, why, why, the, why the fuck why the fuck are you on my field and why do you have your, uh, 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 the commissioner of my league on your phone <laughs> yeah, he wasn't even in the my AP, initial AP, AFL. Was no, he, no, he wasn't. That's no, why he was I, trying to find a new team. He was trying to build a new team. That's why that. I still, I, I still have no explanation as to what the hell that was all about. But, um, but anyway, he, Bernard got on the phone with me, wanted my side of the story, and I was like, "Look, I honestly don't even know what the hell happened. All I can tell you is that we're killing these guys right now, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not gonna let them like reschedule this, right?" And he said, "No, it's, they're gonna take a forfeit if that's if he's leaving. They're taking, you know, they're taking a forfeit, and that was like their fourth forfeit of the season." And if you remember, they had actually beaten the enforcers and and fair and square. And then the decision the was reversed because of his bullshit. So he, he pulled several, you know, moves that enforced cost man, them. That was a, the 
best defensive lineman probably played against I know. one season. I, yeah. I shut him that down. guy was a beast, man. I know, but he was a beast. Mm-hmm. Oh, did he? Um, well, I think they, they fudged it a little bit, but he led the league in the When he came to play us that first game, he was – I'm sorry, I didn't mean to push the table. Um, well, yeah, I heard it fine. in the thing. Yeah, so, no, no, you're fine. Um, he was leading the league in sacks, and I know I, I for certain I, I shut him down completely. I don't think he got anything against me. Yeah. And then when I, when I pancaked him twice – and let him know about it because he said, you're still sorry. And so I bet I came the game. He's like, I'm going inside now. Yeah. <laughs> he went in inside and started wrecking havoc in the game on yeah. the yeah. inside. Yeah, he did. And if you remember in the second game against them, Murtada tapped out. Murtada was like, you got to get somebody else in here because I can't stop this dude. <laughs> Hey, Matt, respect that, though. He was, I, like, I, I he was literally like, that. hey, this guy's killing me. you got to get somebody else in here to take my spot because I'm getting killed. And for a while, I actually swapped you guys. I put him at tackle and I put you at guard. So, uh, But he was getting killed by him. And it's just it was a thing of that guy's 6'6", and he's got huge reach, and, and he's really strong. And, you know, Murtada's six foot and short arms and stuff, so he couldn't he couldn't even get his hands on him. And, and that's, what, that's what the line's all about, man. It don't matter how strong you are. It's about who gets their hands on who first, you know. Exactly. So. The one time you got your ass up off the ground as quickly as possible, the game was over in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they realized there's a real game that time. Yeah. They actually decided to get up real quick, so they decided to quit on us. They're like, oh, God, <laughs> he got up, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get on the bus and go home. That, yeah, that was a bullshit, man. Like, that pissed me off because all of you guys were really upset. And I was, too, because I was looking forward to the ass whooping we were about to uncork on them. Like, after we scored that first touchdown, and it wasn't a two-play thing, it wasn't like a huge play or anything like that, it was that we methodically took the life out of them. That's when I was like, oh, my God, we are going to destroy these guys, and we're going to love every minute of doing it because they fucked us over that first game with those referees that were clearly paid off to, you know, yeah. 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 We played the, um, was it the Pirates? We played the the Hitmen in the playoffs before we went to play Brown County. Yeah. The announcer we had from there literally was – Running off NBA jam quotes the whole time. (laughs) 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 Boom, shakalaka. Exactly, the whole time. It was like, it, he must have said, is it the shoes? If you listen to the video, I'm sure you can find it on, on YouTube. Is it the shoes? He says, is it the shoes about at least seven times. That's hilarious. I wish we had that kind of announcer, man. Oh, we had Jason. Yeah, I was going to say, we had Jason. He's bucking the status quo for six points here. <laughs> Man, that uh, that comment really crossed the planes at the time, right there. <laughs> That's what that did. It's got bars. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we just uh, used them all up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lenny, before we close it up here, you got any good stories or comments or anything like that about your your playing time? Um, I, I honestly would say that when I played for you, was I knew it was my last ride, and yeah. it definitely was the best time I think I had playing football, and definitely kind of re-had that fire joined back in me. So I do yeah. definitely thank you for uh, bringing me along that journey for the Decepticon, especially it was a year and a half of practices. But You were definitely one of my favorite players, even though you spent a shit ton of time on your back on the ground. <laughs> you always, you always uh, gave it all you had. And, like, the most impressive thing that, you know, that I can say about you is that massive improvement that you made as that season wore on like i said when you started off you started off not too great and you looked like you said you were which was you know i don't think i got anything left i think i'm done you know and stuff but then as the season wore on you got in better and better shape as you got more snaps under you and then you shit you finished the season playing both ways man yeah never gonna do that again yeah, I'm, I'm I'm happily retired now so before you i got another, another year left in you <laughs> you got one more you know, I said that. We we all have one more year left. <laughs> I'm going to walk while I still have my knees, okay? Yeah. My wife yeah. would kill me even if, if I played football again. I'll tell you what. Even if he had one more year left in him, I don't have another year of waiting 10 minutes for him to get off the ground every time he goes down. So, so before we close out, Lenny, you got anything else? No, man. Thank you guys for having me on. Anytime you want me on, I'm more than happy to come back and do it again. Yeah, man. That's I really appreciate you having you. Uh, like I said, you're you're entertaining as shit, and you always got funny stories. And we did have a great time together. And and again, if I were gonna start a team tomorrow, and you weren't retired for life, because I also agree that you're retired for life. If those circumstances were not the case, you would be without a doubt one of my top five guys. You would be a top five pick for sure. Thank you so much for big baby. And Damo, I'm Coach Casey. Thanks for tuning in to Semi-Pro Inside the Locker Room.